Why does it happen on a Tuesday? This is what we need on a Saturday, right? No, no. This gets you geared up for a Saturday. Oh, okay, okay. And you might do something during the week that's spontaneous. <laughs> yeah, uh, you and I, at one time in our lives, we uh, performed a lot of children's music shows. And uh, once in a while, they would invite us to do a show at that little... They have a little tiny stage over at Barnes & Noble, right? Yeah, really nice. And so the the green room at Barnes & Noble, by the way, is, is the back room where they have all the books on shelves. <laughs> They're huge. Pretty amazing. And, and I remember we were waiting to go out... And and uh, play for the children and uh, the Summer Brain Quest books were there mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't you know I was like getting wrapped up in them because I'm still a kid at heart right? <laughs> I love them when you see these books you just want to do this stuff right uh, yeah. Susan Bolletin is on the phone she's a journalist a magazine editor the publisher and editorial director of Workman Books and she's on the phone to talk to us about Summer Brain Quest get ready for school for adventurers between the grades pre-K and K which is why it was so attractive to me because that's kind of where my brain is. <laughs> Susan Bolletin. Good morning, Susan. How are you? Good morning. I'm fine. And how are you? This I never get old. This never gets old for me. I just love this. I don't know why. I never gets old for me either. It's a good thing we're both in this business. Then. I mean, it's just fun to look at. It's fun to remember, you know. And it's good to know that I can maybe do half these equations too. <laughs> <laughs> we have books that go up to sixth grade, so if pre-K, the book for pre-K and K is a little easy for you. We we can send you some oh, for older God. grades too. Yeah, well, you know, I failed the test two plus one plus one times seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is an ongoing controversy. Have you seen that on the internet? Two plus one plus one times seven. No. Well, the, en- the two plus. Do you want to do it? What? Let's see what you come up yeah, with. Yeah, two plus. Two plus one. Plus one times uh-huh. seven. Two plus one plus one times seven. <laughs> it's um, it's thirty five. Thirty five. <laughs> well, the two the two possible answers are twenty eight. Two plus two plus one. Oh plus wait a second. One. Two plus one plus one is four. Uh huh. Right, right. So four times seven is twenty eight. Thank you. Exactly. Thank That's you. what we get. <laughs> is twenty eight. But if you right. go, but if you go to a yeah, cal- I, I put in one too many ones. Yeah, yeah. But go to a calculator. And put in 2 plus 1 plus 1 times 7, and it's going to tell you 10. Yeah, this is a controversy. <laughs> what? So, I know. I'm I know. glad you're on our side. I know. We've been told we were wrong. I know. I know. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. That's why your books are so great. I, I love calculator. <laughs> the calculator needs to use summer, some summer brain quest. That's right. <laughs> so, where, how, uh, are these are out right now? Are the books out already? Yes, they are out right now. The summer brain quest for the summer between pre-K and K is new, but the other ones have been out for a year. Do you know, when my son was little, he's thir- he's going to be 32, so he's not little anymore. But when he was little, he he was, what would he call it? Uh, he would read a lot. I know this is a word, but I can't remember. Not amorous. Precocious? Precocious, no. Mm. Voracious. voracious, thank you. Voracious. Voracious. Voracious, right. Yes. Mm-hmm. The only time I use the word voracious is when I describe a reader. <laughs> right? You, you can't be a voracious can, ice cream person, right? <laughs> you can be a voracious eater. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can be. You're right. You must know me. Uh, one All of right. the wonderful I things so. about your uh, summer brain quest is that you have hands-on for um, uh, drawings and for problems, but at the end of the uh, at the end of the book, you also have uh, recommended books for the children to read during yeah. the summertime. Yeah. It's really important. It's the number one thing that that kids should be doing over the summer. They should be doing it all year round is reading, reading physical books, not looking at the screen, reading. And uh, educators recommend that every child should read at least six books over the course of a summer. If they're little, they can you can read to them. If they're older, they should be reading them on their own. But read aloud talk about them have a family book club it's the most important thing you can do uh, i'm on page 107 today is taco day by the way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things that uh, you point out is that uh, uh children might backslide during the summer and that uh, you did a study and children from low-income ho- households suffer the greatest losses Yes, and I think, 
you know, the reasons for that might be uh, might be obvious, but it's thank goodness that there are lots of public libraries and uh, Head Start centers and other places, summer camps that that children of all income levels can can take advantage of. Because, as I say, the most important thing is to be surrounded by books and language and. You know, you don't have to be in school to be learning. You can you can go outside and and you can you can try to stump somebody with a math problem like two plus, plus one plus one times seven. Right. There just you go. Just don't use you a do calculator. Do it anywhere, anytime. <laughs> so yeah. I, in the back of the book, I wanted to ask you, Susan. There's the, like a game that uh, folds out. What is that? Yeah. Well, one of the things that's really important to, to stop summer slide, which is this incredible brain drain that happens over the summer if the kids' brains aren't being used, is one of the really important things is to make the kids feel that learning is rewarded. So, and that you take it seriously, that you value it. So, in Summer Brain Quest, we have stickers which the kids can then put on the game board. It's a fold-out map at the back, and the idea is that they're going to ah. complete the journey around the map by the end of the summer. So it's it's like they have the same um, satisfaction that they might get from the completing a level of a video game, but this time they're actually making them smarter. And that's pretty amazing because we were told you had video game artist Edison Yan as the person that did all of the artwork. Yes. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that kids could, when they looked at the characters and the art, that it felt familiar and game-like to them, because it's not like we're exactly trying to trick them, because there's, I mean, learning is fun, it should always be fun, but we wanted to make make it clear, particularly during the summer, that um, that this isn't a chore. This is something you want to do that is going to, that it's going to engage you in the same way a video game might. And you have outdoor activities as well that you have suggestions for. Yeah, because, um, well, when you're talking about particularly with little kids, you want to make sure that they develop their fine motor skills, but they also want to develop their gross motor skills. We and, and we know for a fact that American kids don't move enough, so we want to make sure that they go outside, that they jump around, that they skip, that they're hopping, that they're running, they're swimming. So we have activities in the back of the book that do, the kids can do outside to take the learning outside and um, experience the air and the sun and the or the rain at the oh summer. Oh And uh, yeah, and. And make learning a part of the daily experience. So it could be, let's say your your family's going on a picnic. If uh, if you're little, you know, you might it might be your first introduction to weights and measurements, to plan a recipe, to you know, to plan a game that the that the family's going to do on the picnic. Maybe when you get there, you're going to count the number of bugs you see on your right, on your right, picnic right. blanket. So you just make learning part of everything. <clears throat> yeah, Robin and I have a unique position because we do a radio show, so we see the cream of the crop. We see kids in here who've done really well in public school, private school, and home school. And so, I, 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 but I always say, the 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 one truth is probably all children are homeschooled. You know, it may be in addition to yeah. public and in addition to private. But I think this is this book is a perfect example of how we all homeschool our children. You know, in one way or another. Exactly. And having a tool like this, this mm -hmm. book is so fun. By the way, I love the family yeah, book club it is idea. Really important. <laughs> uh, yeah, and the kids need to learn at home. And you also have I mean, a uh, home school drink. but you also have a certificate of completion at the end, so the child mm -hmm. feels great yeah, about it. Yeah, because yeah, they want them to feel great, and you know, I, I think that you know, if you if you finish a. Uh, uh, if you do something, if you accomplish something, if you finish a book, let the family talk about it at the dinner table. Make make much of it. Uh, make note of whatever the ki the child is doing that is using his or her brain. It should be valued as much as winning the swim meet. I mean, winning the swim meet is great too, but it's all part of being a well-rounded child. And I, th I think they're just going to have a blast with this one. I was sent a copy of Summer Brain Quest. Get ready for school. So if you would like the one that was sent to me, this is for pre K through K, or pre -A, pre K and K, uh, call me, and you can have it for your grandchild, your child, uh, maybe yourself, like me. I was having a good time with the book. <laughs> yeah. And but they're available. I saw them in Barnes and Noble, and I'm guessing they're everywhere, right? Yeah. Susan, do you want to give us a website? They are independent books. Mm -hmm. The website is BrainQuest.com uh, or Workman.com, but you can also find them at Barnes and Noble at warehouse clubs. You can buy them online, and of course, at your independent booksellers everywhere. All right, Susan, this this is a fun way to end our morning. Thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Well, 
Uh, thank you so much for having me. You're I'm welcome. I'm going to go try that pro- problem on my calculator. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Don't break it, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, Susan. We will take a little break. Thank be right you. back. You're welcome. Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the third Wednesday of each month at 9.30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. On the first and third Wednesday mornings of each month at 9.05, Robert Colon will be with us from On Top of the World, Ocala's premier active adult community. Be sure to listen and be sure to call in. Speak with Robert to learn about all the exciting lifestyle and new home choices available at On Top of the World. From time to time, Robert will have guests and we're sure you will enjoy our little chats. You deserve the world and we bring it to you. So be sure to tune in on the first and third Wednesdays of each month right here on The Source, WOCA. The College of Central Florida is committed to being your first choice for quality higher education. CF has locations in Marion, Citrus, and Levy counties and offers more than 60 academic programs. Earn a certificate, associate, or bachelor's degree with Florida's 2 plus 2 program. A student can complete an associate in arts at CF and be guaranteed admission to a state of Florida university. CF is ranked number 13 in the U.S. for affordability, is military friendly, and offers a full student life experience. Make CF your first choice. Call 352-873-5800. W-O-C-A, putting the local back into radio. Veterans Helping Veterans USA, call 352-433-2320. We help veterans and their families with limited financial assistance, counseling, employment referrals, and a food and clothing bank. You can help in making a huge difference in the veterans' lives we serve by donating food, clothing, household items, or direct financial assistance. All donations are tax deductible. Veterans Helping Veterans USA, 352-433-2320. Thank you for your attention and God bless America. Here are today's headlines from the source WOCA. A 28-year-old man wanted for murdering an infant in Alabama was shot early yesterday morning in Levy County after trying to escape while holding another person at gunpoint. The original call came from Georgia law enforcement around 8.30 Sunday night saying a murder suspect from Alabama identified as Carlton James Mathis was thought to be in Alachua County. Mathis was eventually found to be in Levy County and was confronted by SWAT around 4 a.m. yesterday morning. The suspect was seen leaving a residence in a red vehicle and deputies could see that he was armed with a handgun, pointing that handgun at the driver. When another person's life was put in danger, the SWAT team took immediate action. The SWAT team was forced to engage him and he was shot there on the scene. Four people were in the SUV with the suspect at the time. One of the passengers and an Alachua County Sheriff's officer were treated for minor injuries from shrapnel wounds. Once released from the hospital, Mathis is expected to be extradited back to Alabama to face homicide charges. Detectives have released the name of a Silver Springs woman who was found dead in the trunk of a car over the weekend in what they describe as a brutal killing. The woman is identified as 61-year-old Laura Russell. Eric Todd Gay, 36 years old, has been charged with first-degree premeditated murder and is being held in the Marion County Jail with no bond. Investigators say Gay was staying the night at the home of the incident on the 12,900 block of Southeast 4th Place and he entered Russell's bedroom with the intent of stealing some of her prescription medications and cash. When she woke up, he choked her unconscious, hit her with a large flashlight, and then choked her with a telephone cord, killing her. The investigation is ongoing. A water safety group is out with some advice for the summer swimming season. That advice is play it safe. The percentage of drownings in open water such as lakes, rivers, and oceans is higher than the percentage for such areas as swimming pools. Of the approximately 1,000 um, fatal drownings that occurred in the last year of data that we have, which is 2016, 43% of them were in open water and 38% of them were in pools. That's Maureen McKay with Safe Kids Worldwide. She says the numbers are higher for older teens than for younger children, so they need to hone their message of safety for that group. 
As we get deeper into the hot season here in Florida, you're going to be hearing the terms heat index or apparent temperature. According to Bob Larson with the Florida Weather Center, here's what is essentially at work. The heat index takes into account the combination of temperature and humidity and approximates a feels like temperature because as we all know, the higher the humidity, the more discomfort we feel on a hot summer's day. All of the weather conditions together produce a feels like temperature and that's where you can take your cue. If it feels like it's 100 degrees in the shade, then treat it like that. Avoid exerting yourself. Keep to the shade as much as you can and stay hydrated. Former Puerto Rican Governor Pedro Rosello was in Tampa to endorse U.S. Democratic Senator Bill Nelson for re-election. Nelson told reporters the government hasn't done near enough to help the Puerto Rican people get back on their feet after Hurricane Maria last September. Here we are more than nine months after and all people do not have electricity restored. Uh, there's a question of potable water in places. And uh, FEMA says that they're pulling out. Nelson, who's running against Republican Florida Governor Rick Scott, says he supports statehood for Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory. They called him a coward after the Parkland massacre. Ex-Broward School Resource Deputy Scott Peterson is speaking out for the first time after he gave up his badge. Video showed Peterson waiting outside the building where students and teachers were being gunned down. NBC's Today Show asked Peterson if he now thinks he made a mistake. I have to. I, I live with that. Uh, you, know, you know, how could I not? I, I mean, I'm human. Peterson insists he did not know whether the attack was going on inside or outside the 1200 building at Stoneman Douglas High School. Lack of paid sick leave can drive people into poverty. That's the conclusion of a study by Florida Atlantic University in Boca Raton. Professor Leanne Deringde says people who don't have sick leave are three times more likely to be poor and taxpayers end up picking up the slack. That we also show they were more likely to be using um, some of our social welfare programs, so state and county welfare programs and, and food stamps in particular. Deringne says her study makes the case for mandating paid sick leave. Governor Rick Scott signed a bill that made sick leave ordinances illegal back in 2013. You've seen those pop-ups on your computer, warning alert, malware detected, call this number. Well, it's a scam, of course, and now several people and two businesses are facing federal fraud charges. The Miami U.S. Attorney's Office says one firm was based in Boynton Beach, the other in Costa Rica, and both combined to scam more than 40,000 people in all 50 states and several foreign countries. 14 people have been indicted. 10 have already cut plea deals. Billionaire Jeff Green is jumping into Florida's crowded Democratic primary for governor less than three months before the election. It's not the first political run for the Palm Beach real estate tycoon. Green ran for the Senate in 2010 and lost by a landslide to then U.S. Representative Kendrick Meek, despite far outspending the congressman. His campaign was dogged by distractions, including reports that former boxer and convicted rapist Mike Tyson was the best man at his wedding and that Hollywood madam Heidi Fleiss was his house guest for a year. There were also news reports about parties on his yacht, which once made a stop in Cuba while the U.S. had a travel ban to that island. After he lost, he sued what is now the Tampa Bay Times, accusing the newspaper of libel during its coverage of the campaign. The newspaper settled the lawsuit in 2016. Forbes magazine lists Green as being worth $3.8 billion. Other Democrats running are former U.S. Representative Gwen Graham and Tallahassee Mayor Andrew Gillum. Republicans running include agriculture. Culture Commissioner Adam Putnam and U.S. Representative Ron DeSantis. Federal authorities say a man charged with filing a fraudulent claim in the aftermath of the Deepwater Horizon disaster has been sentenced to just over three years in prison. A U.S. Attorney's Office news release said yesterday that 62-year-old Joseph Bassler also faces a money judgment of $77,224. He pleaded guilty last June. Prosecutors say Bassler was a licensed tax preparer who assisted companies after the 2010 oil spill in filing business loss claims. He filed inflated claims on behalf of his clients, officials say as payments for his services, Bassler accepted a portion of the recovery money from the claims he submitted. He submitted 62 claims and three were paid off with Bassler and his clients receiving over $600,000 more than they were entitled to. 
A Florida man has been sentenced to more than two years in prison for conspiring to illegally export military-grade equipment to Russia. A U.S. Attorney's Office news release said yesterday that 32-year-old Vladimir Nevirami was sentenced to Miami Federal Court to 26 months in prison. He pleaded guilty in March. Authorities say Nevirami arranged to send night vision rifle scopes, thermal monoculars, and ammunition primers to Russia in 2013. Prosecutors say the devices required authorization from the U.S. Department of State before being exported since they were on the U.S. munitions list. A certified license history check revealed that neither Davidimi, a Ukraine-born naturalized U.S. citizen, nor his associates ever applied for an export license. And the Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey riot at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter has just gotten an upgrade, Universal Orlando revealed yesterday. The ride located inside Hogwarts Castle has been upgraded to 4K HD, giving riders a more realistic view of the magical world. The upgrade to the projection system offers superior clarity and sharper images that will further submerge riders into the storyline, according to the official blog for Universal Orlando. But don't worry, the attractions, set designs, and storyline remained unchanged. Change.